The year is 166 AD. Although the Roman Empire had managed to secure a favorable peace with the Parthians on their eastern frontiers, the Empire's true resolve was about to be tested. Many of the legions, having returned from the east to their original stations along the Rhine and Danube frontiers, had brought back a terrible plague that spread like wildfire throughout most of the Empire. It was referred to as the Plague of Galen, named after the Greek physician who described it. It is known to us today as the Antonine Plague. Modern scholars believe that it was either measles or smallpox, based on the reported symptoms. Much of the population was devastated, which also included the military, thus diminishing much of the empire's manpower. At the same time, Rome had to deal with a massive increase in raids from the Germanic tribes across the Rhine and Danube. Small invasions had been easily repulsed up until that point, but in late 166 or early 167, a force of 6,000 warriors from the Suebi and the Vandalic Lecringi invaded Pannonia. Vexillations of Legio I and Eutrix managed to repulse this invasion, but this was only the beginning. The governor of Pannonia, Marcus Jolius Bassus, opened negotiations with the 11 tribes of the area. The Roman client king of the Marcomanni tribe, Valimar, mediated the talks. A truce was signed and the tribes withdrew from Roman territory. However, in that same year, both the Lacringi and another Vandalic tribe known as the Astingi invaded Dacia along with the Iranian-speaking Sarmatian Ayazigis from the Black Sea region and attacked the army commanded by the governor of Dacia, Alpernius Proclus. The governor was killed and his troops were routed. In response, Legio V Macedonica was sent into Dacia in order to keep them in check. Marcus Aurelius intended to launch a punitive expedition against them for this, but the consequences of the plague meant he had to postpone it until 168 AD. During the spring of that year, both Marcus Aurelius and Lucius Verus marched out from Rome and established their headquarters at Aquilia. Two new legions were raised, Legio II and Legio III Italia. The defenses of Italy and Illyricum were reorganized, and Marcus and Lucius marched their armies across the Alps to check the tribal invasion. However, on their way back to Aquilia in January of 169, Lucius Verus died. Marcus then returned to Rome to oversee the funeral of his adopted brother and co-emperor. In the autumn of that same year, Marcus once again marched out from Rome, along with his son-in-law Claudius Pompeianus. Pompeianus had distinguished himself during the Parthian War and would become Marcus's closest aide during the Marcomannic Wars. Despite Marcus offering to make Pompeianus his heir, he refused. As the Romans advanced towards the Danube, the Azigis defeated and killed the governor of Lower Mauritia, Marcus Claudius Fronto, while attempting to halt their advance. While the Roman forces were bogged down in this region, the Costoboci tribe crossed the Danube and ravaged their way south through the Balkans and reached Greece. At the same time, the most lethal invasion was about to begin. The Marcomanni under King Balamar had managed to form a massive confederation of several Germanic tribes who made their way across the Danube in the spring of 170 AD. In the following battle at Carnuntum, where Legio XIV Gamino was stationed, the inexperienced and outmatched legionaries were utterly defeated by the confederation. The Roman historian Lucian states that 20,000 Romans were killed in this battle. Balamar subsequently ravaged his way to Italy and laid siege to Aquileia. It was the first time that hostile forces had entered Italy since 101 BC during the Cimbrian Wars of the Roman Republic. The army of the Praetorian prefect Titus Furius Victorinus attempted to relieve the city, but was defeated. When Marcus received word of this, he immediately dispatched Pompeianus with several detachments to march south against Balamar, along with future emperor Publius Helvius Pertinax. Aquileia was subsequently relieved and the rest of the invaders had been expelled from Roman territory by the end of 171. The Romans then established new peace trees with the Quadi and Yazigi, and made the Hasdingi and Lacringi tribes their allies in order to further prepare for their punitive expedition into Marcomannic territory across the Danube in 172.
expedition was a success, as the Marcomanni were subjugated and the chief of the Naristi tribe was killed in battle by General Marcus Valerius Maximianus. With these successes, Marcus Aurelius would adopt the title of Germanicus. However, in 173, the Romans were forced to campaign within Quadi territory as the tribe had broken the peace with the Romans. According to Roman historian Cassius Dio, the Quadi had besieged Marcus and the Roman forces of Legio XII Fulminata and very nearly forced them to capitulate due to them running out of water. However, a so-called miracle of the rain occurred when a large downpour helped resupply the Romans with fresh water, while bolts of lightning struck the Quadi and routed them. This event would later be engraved on the column of Marcus Aurelius, it was even printed on coins. Ancient sources even differ on which gods it was that created the supposed divine intervention. In any case, the Romans managed to install a pro-Roman client king of the Quadi, Perseus. In the following year, the Quadi deposed him and installed his rival, Ariogaisus, and Marcus again found himself marching back into Quadi territory after refusing to recognize the new king. He was subsequently deposed and exiled to Alexandria in a swift campaign and thus finalizing the subjugation of the Quadi tribe. Next, Marcus successfully campaigned against the Yazigis, and in 175 a treaty was signed. King Xanticus delivered several thousand Roman prisoners and provided 8,000 auxiliary cavalry, most of whom would be redeployed to Britain. After this, Marcus also adopted the victory title of Sarmaticus. Whatever campaigns Marcus had planned afterwards against the remaining hostile tribes were cancelled as there had been a rebellion in the eastern provinces led by the veteran general of the Parthian War, Avidius Cassius. Cassius had received news from Marcus Aurelius' wife Faustina that Marcus was inevitably going to die while campaigning due to his ailing health, and thus he declared himself emperor in order to try and prevent civil war. The Senate thus proclaimed Cassius an enemy of the state, and before any battle could commence against Marcus and Cassius, a centurion had killed Cassius and sent his head to Marcus, who refused to even see it. Marcus also had no desire to purge any of Cassius' supporters. After this was done, Marcus finally returned to Rome for the first time after nearly eight years. On December 23, 176 AD, a joint triumph was held for him and his son and heir Commodus. The Aurelian Column was erected to commemorate the victories. The respite was not to last long. In 177, the Quadi once again rebelled, along with the Marcomanni. Marcus marched north yet again and arrived at Carnuntum in August of 178. The Romans first crushed the Marcomanni, and in late 179 and early 180, under the command of General Maximianus, defeated the Quadi in a decisive battle at Lagarisio. The Quadi then fled westwards, and were defeated again by the Praetorian prefect Publius Carantenius Paternus. The campaigns had allowed the Romans to annex some of the territory beyond the Rhine and Danube, dubbed Marcomania and Sarmatia. However, on March 17, 180, at the age of 58, Marcus Aurelius died at Vindubona. His successor, Commodus, decided not to continue pursuing the war despite his general's advice. After negotiating a peace treaty with the two tribes, he left for Rome in the autumn of 180 and celebrated a triumph on October 22. Despite this, military operations continued against the Azigis, the Germanic Buri tribe, and small Dacian tribes across the Danube due to their continued raiding into Roman territory. Not much is known about the campaign, but the successes they achieved was enough for Emperor Commodus to claim the victory title of Germanicus Maximus in 182, and thus the third and final Marcomannic War came to an end. The Marcomannic Wars made Rome realize how sparsely defended their northern frontiers were, and subsequently stationed half of their legions along the Rhine and Danube rivers. Commodus had no desire to expand the empire further from that point, choosing to focus more on the administrative tasks of the empire. Although Rome managed to keep itself together during this tumultuous period, new challenges were to arrive fairly soon. For when Marcus Aurelius died, with him died the Pax Romana. And after the assassination of Commodus in 192 AD, the power vacuum that followed would determine which military leader would be capable of ascending to power and keep Rome alive and strong. Thanks again everyone for checking out my second video on this channel. Another big shout out to Malay Archer of the Kings and Generals channel for the assistance. Be sure to check both channels out. More videos on Rome and other nations' history are on the way, so be sure to subscribe for more. This is Legendarian signing off.